Hey, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to do some servicing on my Onan uh, Quiet Diesel 3200 generator. And let's check this out here. Now when we uh, jump into the video, it's going to start out as an oil change video only, but it'll lead to ultimately the air filter and the oil screen right here. Um, I'll show you all of that. The only thing I'm not going to service is the fuel filter at this time and I'll address an oil leak as well as two different oil leaks. Um, since this oil change I've discovered I have a secondary oil leak right about here. I haven't diagnosed this one yet but I have repaired one of the oil leaks and I'll show you how I do that in the video so stick around if you'd like to see it. This is the oil I'm going to be uh, using. And then I have an oil catch pan. Then of course a clean funnel and basically a measuring cup. Uh, very important in order to do the oil change on this quiet diesel, you will need a 22 millimeter wrench. And then on top of it, I do have an all purpose uh, cleaner and some uh, extra paper towel. Let's look inside here, what we have going on. Interesting, I do have a little bit of oil seepage here. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know if, you, if the camera can pick that up. Now I have very low hours on this generator, so not sure why I have that oil seepage going on. Right here, that is the actual drain cap. So you'll be uh, loosening that with a 22 uh, millimeter wrench. And when you do, you need to capture that cap and the oil is gonna drain. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my finger drain through this hole and it will capture that in this catch pan. There's not an oil filter on this, but there is a, a little screen here. Again, you'll have to check your manual to change out that screen. So let me show you how I replace the oil on this. Okay, we're going to get into uh, taking this nut off here. Now I do have to be careful, I did run the generator so all the components are pretty hot. So you do want to take some caution here, maybe uh, let it cool off for a little while. But here's the 22mm uh, wrench. And let's break that nut loose, there we go. And okay, let's uh, take this nut off here. Or the cap. Like I mentioned, that cap is a little warm. So I'm holding on to the cap while I'm uh, turning this. So it's free turning really easy. But what I'm trying to do is when it gets to the end of the thread, I want to make sure I catch that cap. Otherwise, it's going to make a mess if I don't. There we go. I caught the cap and the little ferrule with it. And good time to have the rags here. So if you end up dropping this cap in the hole, let me show you where the uh, hole is going. So you see where the uh, oil is draining out? So if this cap ends up dropping in there, the problem you're going to have is it's going to create some blockage and the bottom of your oil, bottom of the uh, compartment here is all, oil is going to go everywhere on that bottom of that compartment. Hopefully that made sense. So when you take this cap off, you want to uh, be very careful. You want to be able to catch that cap and take it off and hold on to it in your hand. Remove it from that hole. If it falls in the hole, it's not going to slip through. It's actually just going to create a, a barrier and that oil is going to make a mess. All right, we're going to give this uh, some time. Let it, uh, let it drain out. In the meantime, I'm going to clean up this area here and uh, we'll uh, continue on later. So while I'm at it, I've already done this before, but this is how you change out the air filter. You just keep t loosening this. You keep loosening this until this cover comes off. And underneath here, there'll be another little retaining nut here. Like I said, I've already uh, changed out this uh, filter uh, recently. And when you pull this out, this is the actual filter. You wanna make sure this uh, O-ring side is facing that way 
And if you look inside here, the other thing that I do, you don't have to do much in here, but I do clean this out. Now this is all clean, but normally this would be all filled with dust when you're due for service. So I clean it out, put the new air filter in here. Okay, there we go. Put this nut in. Okay, you want to get that uh, nut on there tight. And then this cover goes back in. You just need to line it up and start screwing this cover back on. That threads in. And just like that, your air filter is done. Okay. Okay, there's uh, two parts to this cap. If you can see this cap is hollow, but you'll see it is in this position. It can really go in only one way. This part, we'll call it the conical shape here. That will actually be the plug that goes over that, that hole. So it can really only go in this way and it would be a cap if you put it the other way that would obviously be opposite so let this let's uh, get this back on there it's a, a very uh, a tight fit in here so it's nice if you can use your uh, other hand get your other hand underneath in the hole here and you, you can use it as a guide And then we'll use that 22 millimeter wrench and we'll snug this back up. Now you don't have to crank this thing uh, back on. It's, it's a pretty big wrench so you just need to get it snug. I'm sure there's some kind of a uh, torque setting but again this will be a pretty tough place to get a torque wrench in so for you uh, DIY guys out there, this should be pretty easy. You should get a feel for it. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is, because I saw that oil leak, I don't know where it came from, I'm gonna go ahead and service this uh, filter screen again. Um, just so I can narrow down, I have no idea where this, uh, my oil leak, Came from all I can think of is that my filler cap was not on all the way but it does or uh, my uh, dipstick but it does have two o-rings so I find it hard to believe it can bypass through there but I guess if there's enough pressure it could make it back through through there so let me uh, go get an allen wrench and I'm gonna go ahead and service this uh, screen filter okay I've decided I'm going to uh, take this filter screen off. Now I have it a little bit pre-loosened, it's going to be uh, tight, but uh, you loosen it just a little bit. I don't know how many uh, turns exactly, but you're just getting it loose enough. Then you're going to take a, um, and you're not going to take it out all the way, you're going to take a pair of pliers. Let me see if I can get some pliers in here. You can grab the nut and you can kind of wiggle, wiggle and you'll get this filter to come out like this and I should have probably done that before I cleaned everything up but uh, maybe I don't think this is the source of the leak though I think I found out the source of my leak is looks like it's coming from this little looks like an old PCV valve on those old engines I'm actually not sure oh yep there it is I found it wow this piece was just dangling there look at how loose that is Hmm, I'm gonna look through the own and, uh, manual and see what this is. This looks like some kind of, I don't know, in a gasoline engine, it looks like a PCV valve type and this thing is just slipped on there. So it could be the, uh, you know, the blow-by blowing out of here and that's where the oil is kind of leaking out of here. Now this um, filtered screen, you do have to take this out and clean it. Um, I don't know, you could probably find your own ways. There's uh, little O-rings on here, you see these uh, green O-rings. I think technically you're supposed to uh, replace those O-rings. Mine look, I mean, my generator is pretty new, so I will probably reuse these O-rings. I'll put some oil on here and put it back, but uh, 
I'll be back. Let me uh, go clean this out. I don't think I even need to clean it out again. It's, you know, it's clean. I've done it before. So let me at least clean this area up and put this back in. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have this uh, filter cleaned up again. I have fresh oil around the O-rings. I just cleaned it out with that air compressor. It, it was pretty clean, so let me uh, get this back in. And looks like I found the source of my oil leak. It wasn't anything to do with this. So pop that back in, and we'll tighten this back up. I'll move this throttle out of the way here. And I'll show you where the source of my leak is coming from. That's on there. Then my oil leak, let me see if I can get the uh, camera to capture this. If you look underneath here, even though I ended up cleaning the whole engine compartment here or motor compartment, you see there's signs of oil right there. And I ended up pulling this. This is what was attached up there. If you look at it closely, this piece right here, lucky I took it off, but it's actually cracked right here. Wondering if that was a defect from like day day one. It's you know I barely have a hundred hours on my generator, not even. So I'm surprised that this is cracked like this. But I'll have to get a, a replacement piece. I'm just gonna put some rescue tape on here for now and source this piece here. I, I shouldn't have to uh, change the oil again but that's better check your piece. If you have any oil in your engine compartment if any oil in your engine compartment at all obviously that's not normal uh, it's coming from somewhere and I'm glad I found my source and uh, I'm going to fill it up with oil now and uh, let's call it a day okay I'm about to uh, fill the oil so I have a dedicated Ziploc bag just for my generator oil that I keep uh, basically a funnel in as well as one of these uh, measuring cups. Now this has, we'll call it the metric and standard. So this is uh, ounces. We'll have to convert the uh, 0.7 quarts that I need to ounces, which is about 22.4 ounces. So let's, uh, obviously the max I have is here is eight ounces. I'll fill this up, I'll have to speed this up. Now you do have to pour this in extra slow and I caution you on extra slow because if you fill it too fast you'll you will have a mess on your hand now the first one is not as bad but as it fills it up this oil easily comes up through the fill port so like I mentioned take your time and go slow when you make your first mess, you'll learn right away. So that's eight ounces I have in there now. So here's my second eight ounces coming up. So I'm watching the uh, fill port as I pour this. So I'm not overfilling that fill port. I know you can't see the oil from the uh, top from this camera angle, but hey, okay, that's my s so that's sixteen. So I need about a little over six more. Okay, I have a little over six here. And again, sorry for the camera angle, you're not going to see this good from the fill port, but I'll fast forward all this part here. Okay, now's a good time to uh, show you how I'm gonna uh, fix this temporary. 
And another product that you should probably carry in your RV. Now, because I'm making a temporary repair, this is all rubber components here. I'm going to clean it really good with some alcohol here. So, and I'll flip it over and use the other side here. I'll bore you with these details. But a product I like to carry, now I haven't used it for this, it's right here. This is called, a, it's not in the original packaging, it's called a rescue tape. It's a tape that it sticks to itself. And I'm going to clean this with some alcohol here, clean alcohol. When you stretch it, it actually sticks to itself. And because this is a, a, not a pressure hose, I don't think there's high pressure. I know there's not high pressure going through. It looks like it's some kind of bypass oil oil catch. I said it looks like a PCB valve in a in an automobile. So what we're going to do is, boy, this is going to be tough. I almost need to cut this rescue tape in half. Let me, Maybe cut this rescue tape the long way here. Now you have to keep this uh, rescue tape clean, which I'm not doing the uh, best job at. So you're, you're going to take this rescue tape and you need to stretch it onto itself. because it's not going to stick to the rubber itself. And that's the uh, challenge I'm going to run into, I can see right now already, it is because this rubber is deforming as I stretch this. Okay. Okay, and the stretch, uh, tighter you can get it, the better it's going to actually attach to itself. And we just need to get this tight enough uh, so the purpose of the uh, rescue tape, why I have the uh, rescue tape, is for more for water hoses, for water lines. If I have anything uh, uh, breaking, this will at least patch it up temporary until you can get a permanent repair. So I got one section done here. I'm going to carry on and do the additional section here. It actually is working. And with this camera angle, I'm probably not getting it the best, but there's another product you may want to carry. Now, out of over the years, I've had to use it once, and it was on a macerator hose. So it is useful. Now, it didn't last very long, but it got me by for the trip until I could get a permanent replacement. And it's pretty small and compact, so it might be something you want to carry in your arsenal. All right, there we go. So because it's not a pressure hose, like I said, you have to st stretch it really tight. And you can see, basically, it formed that edge, and it should make a watertight connection. I think there's some kind of glue in here that activates once you uh, stretch it. But uh, just uh, search... I don't know if I'll put a link. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure I bought it from Amazon like everything else, but it's called Rescue Tape. All right, let's get this uh, back on. Okay, I'm going to put this piece back in. I gotta get some light on here. Looks like this lines up with a little section that goes in the engine. Alright, well, looks like I have no choice besides to, uh, to loosen this rescue tape and do it again. Alright, I put some more rescue tape on. Not as tight, so hopefully this goes in much 
easier. Let's see. We don't want it too loose. Okay, I got it this time. That's all it was. I had the rescue tape on a little too tight. There you go, now everything's on there. So, uh, let's see, while we have this, got a semi-clean rag here. Let's check that oil level and see. Your camera won't be able to pick it up, but looks like it's right at the uh, max. I'm gonna uh, start the uh, generator. I'm gonna turn this power back on here, and we'll have to go inside and let's uh, run this generator. And then we'll uh, check the oil level and wrap up. So if you have that quiet, uh, this quiet diesel generator, let me see if I can get this camera angle. You want to turn the on button on and it does the, uh, now when it says gen off, you're going to see this uh, voltage fluctuating. Basically there's a pump. The fuel pump is running and if you go close to the generator you'll, you can actually hear it. And the manual says you gotta wait like 30 seconds. Um, Mike, don't quote me on that. The colder the weather is, the longer you wanna let it run. But I've had the uh, generator running not too long ago to warm up the engine, so let's go ahead and start that. And you see how it says check oil level? Now that means the oil needs to be changed. You see it's, uh, I have 85 hours actually. If you keep the start button in, while it's running, it clears it. That's how you clear your changing your uh, generator oil. I'm going to turn the uh, air conditioner on, let it cycle for a little bit, and we'll go check the oil uh, later on. Okay, I won't bore you with the uh, details, but I ran the uh, um, engine with the uh, air conditioner on. Now, if you're in the uh, winter time, you should probably run it with uh, some kind of uh, load. So I would use a space heater or something. Um, but uh, let me show you another thing here. It, you know, everything in the engine likes to uh, rattle. Just these diesel engines like to rattle a lot. So one thing I'm going to do different. I'm going to take any loose pieces like this that can vibrate. But also, I, re I rerouted all these wires. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but you see it all kind of like melting and wearing away. So I'm going to zip tie these to a, a different area here. They were uh, laying basically right on the uh, engine itself. So I don't know why they had it that way, but that's like an electrical failure waiting to happen. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. And this is zip tied out of the way. And that's really it. I had a little uh, metal hanging tag here too. I took that off. Again, this generator needs all the help it can to keep that uh, sound down. Now, I, I plan on doing some uh, soundproofing in the f future, just not on my highest priority, but I see some obvious areas that you can do some uh, soundproofing. And that's it. You know, uh, check your manual how much oil you need this one has the nameplate right here on what you need to do it's pretty accurate i put in exactly what it said for the oil change and that's exactly what it turned out to be um, check this uh, whatever this uh, bypass oil thing here is i don't know what the part number or part is but you definitely want to check that so i think the moral of the story is your engine bay here, it should be, if you keep it really nice and clean, if you see any signs of oil, you obviously know there's uh, some issues going on here. That's the main thing. Let's uh, stay away from uh, or make sure that you don't have any oil in there. And if you do, uh, check for obvious uh, leaks and go from there. But the oil change on here is really simple. It's definitely, a, you know, it's not even, it's barely a DIY. It's just more of a pain in the butt to just get it done. But uh, something you can easily do on your own schedule instead of bringing it all the way into an oil replace place or a Cummins dealer. If you like videos like this, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you on the next video.